Welcome once again, my fellow manipulators of digital fate. I'm Richie, this is Capricorn, and they finally did it. The son of a bitch did it! Yeah! Yeah! All right! Bands have been announced for standard, three cards in particular, so I'll put them up on the screen now. We're talking about Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Reckoner Bankbuster, and my personal hallelujah, Invoke Despair. Now, all of these cards were problematic in the format. Before I get to the new meta and what I think it will shape up to be and what I think you guys should probably try to steer into playing in order to combat the new meta, let's go over the bands themselves. Now, I'm going to read an article from Wizards here and then we'll get into it. All right, so here's the article from Wizards in its entirety. May 29, 2023, banned and restricted announcement. They announced that in Standard, they're getting rid of Fable, Invoke Despair, and Bankbuster. The effective date is today, May 29th, for Tabletop Play and Magic Online, but it goes into effect for Arena tomorrow, May 30th. Now, let's get into the meat and potatoes of it. The banned and restricted philosophy update with changes to standard. Recently, we released an article talking about tabletop standard and our renewed focus to improve it at every level. Today represents our second step toward delivering on that goal. So what's important to note there, guys, is all of these changes they've been implementing, both with the change to standard rotation, which I'll be making a video about soon. It'll go up later this week. And also the bans that they've announced today. The primary goal is to get people to play standard physically. The fact that it's going to affect Arena is kind of just a side effect because anything that's affecting Standard is going to, you know, obviously bleed into Arena because Arena, the primary mode, even though Wizards doesn't want it to be, the primary mode of play that people get excited about is Standard. So, when talking to players about bans in Standard, most of the community feedback we've received, whether coming from players competing at the top tables of the Pro Tour or those enjoying a more relaxed Wednesday night standard at their local game store has focused on how disruptive our current banning cadence can be. Bans are a pain point for standard engagement. They are too unpredictable, too inconsistent, and hurt players' ability to have confidence in building and playing their decks. Moving forward, we are going to change the cadence with which we manage our formats, particularly standard. Our goal is to make most of our format changes once a year for greater consistency. This announcement will happen annually before fall previews begin. This will not only include standard, but also modern pioneer legacy and vintage. So these ban changes are actually affecting all formats, not just standard, even though today's ban is just a standard ban. Uh, in addition to the yearly announcement, we will also have a banned and restricted update on the third Monday after every set release specifically dedicated to addressing large environmental imbalances. These will, by and large, happen after the Pro Tour. Now, the whole point of that is they want to do bans just once a year so that if they get through that once a year ban, you can feel safe in buying cards and that you're going to be able to use them for the whole next year without a banning. But there's a panic button where within a three-week window after every set's release, they can emergency ban something. And that's the only time that it will happen outside the once yearly ban that will happen pre-rotation every year, probably in August. Um, what's crazy about that is it, it's nice that we have those emergency bans so we can avoid something like a new Oko coming into the environment, but it kind of it's kind of counterproductive to the yearly banning. It's like they're admitting that they need to stick to once a year ban so that people will feel comfortable buying cards, but they're also admitting that they can't stick to just yearly once a year bans because they know full well that there's probably going to be problems that they don't foresee in standard and they're going to need to do emergency banning. So that's kind of a red flag right off the bat. That said, we are banning three cards from Standard today to help make this transition. We felt it was important to begin this new era of Standard with a clean slate, so to speak, without a specter of recent ban talk hanging over the format. To do so, we decided to make the following changes and ban the aforementioned three cards. Now, some people are a little bit confused about what they mean by this. Why don't they want the specter of a recent ban hanging over the format when they make changes? Isn't that what this is? It's a ban that's hanging over the format. The whole point is this is an extra ban. 
What they're announcing here is that the yearly ban hasn't even happened yet. That's going to happen probably in August, just before the new set rotates in and before a year from now, rotation will start to happen again like normal and a full, a full year of sets will rotate out. So the bans that we have today, the three cards that we got today, it's a preemptive ban. They're saying, look, we're trying to get these three cards banned and out of the way now so that when everyone's getting excited for the new the new standard for the first time ever, a set coming into standard in September without the whole last year's worth of stuff rotating out, we don't want that to be marred by a ban happening right around the same time. So what I get from this is they don't expect to have to ban anything come August at the normal, what they're planning to be now, a normal yearly ban, and instead they're making those changes now so that come August, the focus will be on the positive aspects of the new Eldrain set rotating in, and uh, none of these ban changes kind of like putting a damper on that. Will it work? I don't know, and we'll get to that in just a minute. We've been watching the rise and dominance of the core three color shell based in black red over the past several set releases and premier level tournaments. We believe that these changes will help reduce the win rate of the dominant strategy in the format create an exciting shakeup and entry point to the format preceding the summer and the release of Wilds of Eldraine. Fable of the Mirror Breaker, Reflection Kiki, uh, Reflection of Kiki Jiki, they go on to explain why that was banned. That's a no-brainer. And then Reckoner Bankbuster, they go on to explain why that was banned. That's a no-brainer. And then Invoke Despair. They move on to explain why Invoke Despair was banned, and that is also a no-brainer. Uh, all of these cards just provide way too much card advantage for just one card. Uh, they're too competitively costed, and they help make other strategies not be able to keep up with strategies that are utilizing these cards. That's that's it in a nutshell. So we will have our first yearly banned and restricted announcement on August 7th, 2023, ahead of Wilds of Eldraine previews. What should we take away from this? So first of all, I think it's pretty clear that they don't actually plan to ban anything on August 7th in Standard. There may be some bans in other formats, but I think they're trying to get all of the bannings out of the way now so that when Eldraine's about to drop, they can just focus on making sure everyone's excited about that set, basically take all of the focus away from all the negatives that come along with the idea of having a new rotation that's now three years long instead of two. Uh, and that kind of goes without saying, and I'll, I'll get into more about how I feel about standard rotation in another video coming later this week, so look forward to that one, but let's stick to talking about the bands and how they're going to be affecting the meta right now. So first off, it's important to note that all three of these cards are things that fit decently well into mid-range and fit decently well into control. And so the biggest hits are coming to mid-range and control. I think right away, right off the bat tomorrow, and for the next week or two, you're going to see a huge uptick in aggro because all of the most dominant mid-range and control decks are going to be taking a hit here. Some of them will just be taking a hit from losing Bankbuster, Others will be taking more severe hits, like the Rax, uh, Rakdos and Grixis decks. So, the one thing that doesn't get affected at all is aggro. You're going to see a lot of mono red, you're going to see a lot of mono white, probably humans, you're going to see a lot of Esper legends and other types of legends brews, and probably other forms of aggro pop up. I think, eventually... Aggro is going to be dominant enough that control is going to come back and swoop in and the most powerful color for control is going to be white. Cards like Sunfall will get their time in the sun, no pun intended, and also cards like Farewell that have been huge staples for a while now are going to continue to shine. So I think you're going to see the meta twist towards an aggro style meta right off the bat, and then as the format gets flooded with aggro, especially on the ranked ladder, you're going to start to see a couple weeks from now, some of these control decks, especially white control, possibly some form of red control that can really deal with all this early aggro, just start to gain dominance in the format. 
And then the one outlier that's really going to rise to the top through all of this is, I think, anything that's utilizing Thalia, especially Esper Legends. Uh, with these three cards in particular being banned and Rafine not being touched, Thalia not being touched, even Wandering Emperor not being touched, uh, once, once these control decks really come to power and they start dealing with all of this aggro that's sure to come up, I really think... These es the Esper Legends deck, or really maybe a, a mono white human deck that utilize utilizes Thalia, is is just going to swoop in. They're going to make it hard for those control decks to do what they want to do on curve, and it's possible that Esper Legends in particular might become somewhat problematic once the dust settles. But for now, expect a lot of aggro, and then expect control to come back kind of out of nowhere to deal with the aggro. And my money is on Esper Legends or some form of mid-range deck utilizing Thalia, which I think Esper Legends is probably the best one uh, to sort of rise to the top of the format. So those are my predictions. I would say if you want to be ahead of the game, maybe think about a control deck that can sweep the, the, sweep the field early but also be able to deal with Thalia early in a very cost-effective way, possibly with something like Cutdown or, um, you know, sim similar cards like that. But um, bear in mind that we're going to see fluctuations. A couple weeks from now, Control is going to become dominant, and then because of that, a couple weeks from then, decks utilizing Thalia are going to become more dominant, and it's, it's really going to shake out in an interesting way, and I'm not 100% sure how healthy the format will be once it's all said and done but at the very least the most problematic cards are gone thank garfield for that and uh i'm looking forward to hopefully knock on wood a healthy standard come time for not not rotation i guess when eldrain comes out but um i've got a whole nother video i've been working on for the past week talking about the new standard rotation that's coming soon look forward to that my first post ban uh deck tech is going up tomorrow so also look forward to that if you found any value in this video make sure and give it a like so that we can get it out to as many people as possible also be sure to subscribe so that you never miss a deck tech upload we do have that first post ban deck coming tomorrow and then some other decks coming later this week also, if you'd like to catch a behind-the-scenes look at what I'm up to, or to be a part of Community Night, or to interact with me, make sure to check out twitch.tv slash quarantinedcapricorn, because if I'm alive and I'm breathing, I'm there and I'm streaming. And until next time, always make them scoop. Thanks so much for checking out my channel. We're working hard to get to 2,000 subscribers now because we blew right past 1,000. So make sure you like and subscribe. Also, if you'd like more magic deck text, that's somewhere over there. And if you'd like to see what else the channel's been up to lately, that's somewhere over there. Also, subscribe, circle below, do all the things.